There is a verse glorifying the pastimes of Lord Krishna and Lord Chaitanya as perfectly complementary. Chaitanya Lila Mrita Pura, Krishna Lila Sukar Pura, Duhe Mili Hoy Sumadurya, Sadhu Guru Prashade Tahaye Shwade Sejane Madhurya Prachurya. The pastimes of Lord Chaitanya are the sweetest nectar. And Krishna's pastimes are also the sweetest nectar. They are perfectly complementary. They go together. Lord Chaitanya's pastimes are the sequel to Krishna's pastimes. And Lord Chaitanya's pastimes are the prelude to Krishna's pastimes. How? Lord Krishna appeared first in the age of Dwarpar over 5,000 years ago, <clears throat> exhibited his transcendental pastimes, established dharma on the earth, defeated the demonic kings who were tyrannizing the world, and by his sweet loving pastimes, showed his own glory, his sweetness, his beauty, so that people could be attracted to him, the devotees, and could develop love for God and go to the spiritual world. Therefore, he described this method in Bhagavad Gita. He described this method to Uddhava in the Uddhava Gita, in the 11th canto of the Bhagavatam. And in so many examples of his pastimes, he described this. But he is himself the incarnation of, he is God. He is Krishna, the supreme absolute truth, the supreme controller. But Lord Chaitanya is the incarnation of the pure devotee, the incarnation of the holy name, the incarnation of divine love, and the incarnation of supreme mercy. So Lord Krishna is Ishwara Parama, the supreme absolute truth, controller of all controllers. This is described in all the Vedic texts. If you study Sanatana Dharma, if you study all the scriptures, Vedanta, Veda, Purana, Upanishad, with proper vision, then you'll understand that the ultimate supreme truth is Krishna. But he is the Vishai, the object of everyone's love and devotion. So therefore he came as his own devotee, to show us the process how to develop love of God and enter his spiritual kingdom. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, come to my eternal abode, Ata Urdhvang Nasangsaya. If you follow this process, I will deliver you, have no doubt. But there's theory and practice. Arjuna said, it's more difficult to control the mind than to control the wind. Krishna said, you should practice. And Arjuna said, how will I practice? Who will show me how to practice? Who will help me while I am practicing? Who will guide me and protect me? So he asked Krishna, what is the nature of the sadhu, a spiritual teacher, a saintly person? Krishna began to describe this. What is the nature of a sadhu? And Krishna described it in many verses. Where are you going to find such a personality, such a pure devotee? It's rare. And who will properly enunciate the method of the scriptures, how to develop that love of God. Therefore, Krishna said, I must come myself. I will teach this myself. This is one of the reasons for his descent as Lord Chaitanya. He wanted to relish the moods of his beloved Shrimati Radhika. He wanted to understand his own sweetness that he himself is the object of everyone's love. He cannot relish their experience of him. Right? The mood of Shimati Radhika and the sweetness because she has the highest love, so she experiences him to the highest extent, the highest zenith. So he wants to understand what is her experience of him. So that's one of his internal reasons. But he said also, I will come myself, aham, apani achari koile. I will show by my own example. And then I will teach. So Lord Chaitanya's pastimes are the sequel to Krishna's pastimes. How to actually practice everything described in the Bhagavatam. How to practice everything described in the Gita. Not only how to practice, but he established his own lineage of those who are connected to that source of divine love, Srimati Radhika, and the residents of Vrindavan who have pure love for Krishna. Establish that lineage. 
and also took shelter of that lineage himself, showing how we must do it. He took shelter of Madhavendra Puripad, the root of the tree of divine love, who had fully imbibed the mood of Sri Radha, being her own servant, maid. Being a gopi herself, that personality appeared, and Lord Chaitanya entered that line, taking shelter of Ishvara Puripad, who was under the shelter of Madhavendra Puripad. So he showed, practicing without guru and lineage, how much will you get benefit? Right? You can cut the roses off the bags. <laughs> no problem, you have scissors, right? Yes. All right, so he showed this. I will teach myself. This is important to understand. And he wanted to relish from the perspective of the devotee. Why is it that? This is the great mystery. That being God, everyone thinks being God is great. Like it would be great to be God, right? It's like very popular pseudo-religion. The religion of wanting to become the object of worship. It's very popular. But that is not our faith or our religion. It said this is especially prominent with those who have no devotion or love for God. Then there's primarily two kinds of people who don't have love and devotion to God. The materialist and the impersonalist. Materialist wants to enjoy this world like God, and impersonalist wants to just become God. And because they cannot directly become God, they just say God is just everything and I am that. But that is not the real essence in the teaching of the scripture. So Lord Chaitanya said, I will come and establish this. But also, we think it's great to be God, right? Oh, I want to be God. But even better is to be who you are, first of all. Act according to your own dharma. Krishna says, Shreyan so dharma viguna para dharma bhayavaha. It's better to be who you are than to try to be somebody else. So that's the first idea. Don't, why, what's the point of trying to be God when that position is already taken? Many demons have tried to fight Krishna and defeat Krishna so they could achieve his post. We never hear that any of them were ever successful. So that's the first point. But there's another deeper truth which is that Krishna's devotees experience a bliss that even Krishna is desiring to taste. <clears throat> and Krishna says, actually, I consider the devotees bliss in the reciprocation of love with me to be greater than my own happiness when I am receiving their love. God cannot be limited, so we're not limiting his bliss. But he says that I am the object of everyone's love. And I am giving them bliss, and I am the ocean of bliss. And they are entering that ocean of bliss in their relationship with me. That particle of bliss that is in our nature when we're entering, people talk about it like the drop mixing with the ocean. In this example, we are not merging with God. Take the example of a cup. People say, the impersonalists say, oh, if you put water in a cup, it becomes one with the water. But no. You keep pouring water, the water overflows. The volume increases. And we see this example in this world, every leaf has some minute speciality. Every snowflake has some minute speciality. Every individual spirit soul is unique, has some speciality. So the idea here is that when that particle of bliss connects with Krishna, the ocean of bliss. That particle of bliss experiences the ocean of bliss. And in connection with Srimati Radhika, the supreme source of all bliss, for Krishna himself as well, then what happens? The jiva, the soul, in service of Sri Radha, meaning aligned with her purpose of giving bliss to Krishna, pleasure to Krishna by devotion, then Krishna also receives happiness. It's not that God isn't happy by the devotee's love and devotion. Krishna experiences bliss when the jiva with their particle of bliss is connected and aligned with Srimati Radhika, whose very nature is to give bliss and pleasure to Krishna. This is bhakti. It's a very essential understanding. We come together for festivals not to enjoy our senses, but to try to please Krishna. That is bhakti. That sentiment is devotion or bhakti. So, Lord Chaitanya said, I myself will advent. And I will teach this and I will experience this. 
Because that bliss of the devotee, when they experience ecstatic love of God, is so profound that Krishna himself, as the Lord, cannot fathom it when he's in that position of God himself. Okay? He is the Lord himself. He cannot understand or comprehend that his devotees are so ecstatic, they're so blissful, genuinely overwhelmed with bliss in their love for him, that he wants to understand that. So he appears as Lord Chaitanya. So Lord Chaitanya's pastimes are a sequel to Krishna's pastimes. Krishna himself came again. And they're a prelude to Krishna's pastimes. Why? Because for us, we haven't been in Krishna's pastimes. However, if we take shelter of Lord Chaitanya and enter the service of Lord Chaitanya and the mission of Lord Chaitanya, then by that process, we'll enter in Krishna's pastimes. In Krishna's eternal abode, as Krishna promises in Bhagavad Gita, in the Bhagavatam, and in all Vedic scriptures. So therefore, Krishna Lila Sukarpura, Krishna's pastimes are the essence of nectar. Like camphor, there's an example of a special prep. Krishna Lila Sukarpura, Chaitanya Lila Amrita Pura. You can take off your chatter. No problem, it's fading. It's okay, he's serving from two in the morning, typing our Gurudev's lectures. Okay, Hare Krishna. All right, <clears throat> so some kinds of sweets you make, like for example, we're reading yesterday, noontime, we sing a song to Krishna. This is, I'm trying to explain this verse. And then we'll move forward. There's a song we sing to Krishna at midday about all the different preparations he eats. All right. So I'm trying to explain why Krishna's pastimes and Lord Chaitanya's pastimes are perfectly complementary. Has anyone had sweet rice? It's not just milk and rice. There's some sugar. There's some cardamom. Or you can make it with saffron. You can put some blanched almonds. You can put pistachio. There's so many ways to make it. You can put jackfruit juice, ripe jackfruit. You can put mango. Different times, different ways. Why rasa? Variety and special flavors. And there's many examples like that. But the example given here in this verse is that the most amazing, imagine the most amazing sweet. It has different ingredients that perfectly complement each other. So that is Krishna's pastimes and Lord Chaitanya's pastimes. Perfectly complementary. How do we relish that? Sadhu Guru Prashade Tahaye Ashwade Sejane Madhurya Prachurya. By the mercy of Sadhu, that means Krishna's devotees and Guru, the spiritual teacher, then you can relish that, you can experience it. Tahaye Ashwade. Our process is to share the teachings of Lord Chaitanya and then practice those teachings so then we can come to the experience of bliss in that relationship and the reciprocation of pure love for Krishna. So this is how taking shelter of Lord Chaitanya, we can enter Krishna's pastimes. Gora Prema, Rasar Nave, Se Tarange, Jeva Dube, Se Radha, Madhava Antaranga. By taking shelter of Lord Goranga, Chaitanya, in the mood of service. Then, by developing devotion to Lord Chaitanya, spontaneous love for Krishna will manifest in our heart. And also, by taking, when you have devotion for someone, what happens is if you really focus on them, meditate on what is their nature, what do they like, right? If I like you and I really love you and I really have devotion to you, I'm interested. What do you like? What are you interested in? So there's a story in Jaiva Dharma. Bhaktivinoda Thakur's book about what is the nature of real dharma, eternal dharma. It's an important story. A person was attracted to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's scholarly pastimes. He was so intelligent. He was such a great scholar. As a little boy, he defeated the greatest scholar in India, like a plaything. They were attracted to this. And they were students of Sanskrit, and so they started following Lord Chaitanya. But by meditating on Lord Chaitanya, they developed attraction for him, and they started studying his life. And they said, oh, but when he was a young man... After he took Gopal Mantra from his guru, Ishwar Puripad, he developed ecstatic love of God. What is the nature of that love of God? And they started studying it. And then they thought, let me see if I can find any of Lord Chaitanya's devotees. And they went and met him. And then very quickly they developed that mood of Lord Chaitanya. Why? Because Lord Chaitanya, what is his mood? If you have devotion to someone, 
then you want to understand what is their mood, right? If we have devotion to Krishna, we should understand Krishna's mood. What is Krishna's mood? He has love for Shirada, he has love for the cows, he has love for Vrindavan, he has love for our, all devotees. So if you want to understand Krishna, understand who he loves, understand his nature, understand his qualities, his pastimes. So there's a verse, yata yata gauda. How is it that by developing devotion for Lord Chaitanya, we enter Krishna's pastimes? How? And not just Krishna's pastimes, but the intimate association of Radha, Rani, and Krishna as they perform pastimes in the groves of Vrindavan. How? Yata yata gauda padara vinde vinde ta bhaktim krita punya rashi tata tatot sarpita hridya kasmad Radha Padamboja Sudamburasi. It's a good verse to learn. Yata Yata Gora Padara Vinde. That means as much as you develop love for the lotus feet of Lord Chaitanya. Vindeta Bhakti Krita Punyarashi. As you develop devotion, O oh most glorious soul who develops devotion to Lord Chaitanya, what happens? Vindeta bhakti krita punya rashi, then tata tatot sarpita hridya kasmad. There's an awakening in your heart. Ut sarpita hridya kasmad. Your hrid, your heart, utpati, there's an awakening in your heart of love for God. But who is the abode of that love for God? Who is the source of that love for God? Radha padamboja sudambudasi. This is spoken by Prabodhananda Saraswati Pad. Sri Vaishnav, who joined the family of Lord Chaitanya. As much as you develop devotion to the lotus feet of Lord Chaitanya, you develop an affinity for him. What is he interested in? Radha, Bhava, Duti, Suvalitam. He was always in the mood of Srimati Radhika. So then, the understanding of her glory and her love and the interest in that will start to develop in your life. And the more you develop that, the more you'll enter into their association of Radha Madhava by the mercy of Lord Chaitanya. So, with that introduction, we'll discuss how Lord Chaitanya started exhibiting love for God and distributing this. All right? So, when Lord Chaitanya's father passed away, he went to Gaya, where is the tradition to perform the final funeral rites and offer oblations. And there he met his guru, Ishwara Puripad, who himself had this love of God in the line of his guru, who is the, one of the only persons since that time who really understood the mood of Srimati Radhika and had her love in his heart. And so Lord Chaitanya joined that line and himself began to exhibit this mood before he's in the mood of Krishna. But now there was a transformation and he really understood and experienced the mood of the love of Srimati Radhika for Krishna. That thing that he sought, Radhaya Pranaya Mahima, the glory of the love of Srimati Radhika and Sokyam Chasya Mad Unubhuvata, to relish his own beauty, his own sweetness that he cannot do as himself. There's an interesting philosophical point here, okay? Three kinds of bliss from our three, four days ago, who remembers? Jiva Surupananda. Bhagavat Surupananda and Surup Shakti Ananda. The bliss within yourself, the particle of bliss, Anandakan. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur describes this. The second one, Bhagavat Surupananda, the bliss of Krishna's own nature, his own form. And Surup Shakti Ananda, the internal potency of Krishna, who is Sri Radha, whose very nature is to offer herself for the pleasure of Krishna, or it's the nature of pure bliss. That is her nature. Ladini Shakti, the pleasure potency of Krishna. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, or Krishna himself, does not relish his own bliss, Bhagavat Svarupananda. That is for Srimati Radhika, that is for the Jivas. When you enter a reciprocative relationship with Krishna, then his Bhagavat Svarupananda, the bliss of his own form, his own nature, is experienced by the devotees. And it's ultimately experienced to the highest extent by Srimati Radhika, because she is the topmost love, Madanakya Mahabhav. So she is experiencing Bhagavat Surupananda to the highest extent possible. But Krishna is experiencing Swarup Shakti Ananda, the bliss of her nature, of her loving relationship. That spiritual life is all about relationship. Spiritual life is about developing, establishing, and relishing that relationship of love. 
with the soul, with Krishna, and with his spiritual family. So Lord Chaitanya now, he imbibed that mood of Srimati Radhika through that lineage and by chanting Gopal Mantra. This is spoken in the Puranas, in the Sastras, there's the Gopal Mantra. And by chanting this Gopal Mantra, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu returned to Navadvip, he was completely transformed. Different person. His previous student said he has Vata Rog, a disease of the heirs. When you're Vata, you're too imbalanced in your heirs, you go crazy. I've personally witnessed this. And many people throughout my life in India and in the West as well, people who get too imbalanced, their soul is moving on the, consciousness is riding on the waves or the, the airwaves of the pranas. And vata rog means it's just too dis and unstable. So it's like you're going crazy. So people thought Lord Chaitanya is just going mad. Sometimes he became stiff like a pillar. Sometimes he became soft like butter. He was mad in the ecstasy of love of God. And people could not understand what has happened to him. What has happened to Lord Chaitanya? Imagine you're just a regular Navadri Basi bystander. And this beautiful Lord Chaitanya, Lord Chaitanya was the wealth of their heart. They all loved him. Like everyone in Vrindavan loves Krishna. How can you not love Krishna's in his incarnation? Everyone was spontaneously attracted to him. But there's a difference between appreciation of love and affection and what is his gift? What did he come to give? How can I align with him and take his gift? So not everyone was ready to receive his gifts, but they loved him. So now he was completely changed and people didn't like it. You know, sometimes we're like, I love you, but just the way you were, not the way you are now. <laughs> so people said, what has happened to him? He's become a madman. He came home and he first met with everyone. So now we can kind of meditate on this scene, all right? Lord Chaitanya has been chanting this Gopal Mantra, the names of Krishna, connected with that lineage of those who are the servants of Srimati Radhika who have completely embodied her love and who are blessed with her pure grace and mercy. So he, he take, took that mantra in that line and he's been chanting and he's developed love of God, love of, love of Krishna that he wanted to come and relish. So now he came home and everyone greeted him. Everyone from Navadri, thousands and thousands of people and Lord Chaitanya was present in the middle like the full golden moon, Gora Chandra sitting amongst thousands of stars. Everyone is sitting around him and they were so happy to see him. Some people would come, the elders came and they blessed him, patting his head and some put their hand on his heart and spoke sweet words to him. And Lord Chaitanya was smiling like the, full of joy, the joy of, you know, the golden moon fully risen, imagine in, your assembly, the full moon rises and the moon's nature is cooling rays, rasa. Rasa comes from the moon. That means nectar, sweetness. It's the mother energy, right? That nourishing love. So Lord Chaitanya is present in the assembly and everyone is bathing in his beauty, but he still did not fully exhibit his mood. This is one nature of the devotee. As they develop pure love of God, they know how to kind of contain their, ex their moods of love in certain company. So he hid it. But then when there's the certain circumstances, you cannot hide any longer. I want to tell up to three, four stories, but we'll just kind of go at our own pace and we will do another class, you know, even one or two classes today. On Gaur Purnima days, Gurudev would have people read the whole Chaitanya Bhagavat, start to finish, all just reading all the Bengali verses. But we're going to focus on some special stories. And so we'll see, maybe we'll do a few classes. All right, because that way we can relish and kind of deeply go into the moods. Then the way I can describe the philosophy and the stories. So there's a verse, Yada sang harate chayang kurmanga niva sarvasa. You know this verse? You, you learned this. Kurmanga niva sarvasa. Tasya pragya pratishtita. So the sages, they withdraw their senses in materialistic company. That means they don't exhibit their love of God in the, in the wrong company. Generally not, sometimes. But then when you come into devotees, association, then you can naturally show your love for Krishna. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu himself explained like this. So Lord Chaitanya then said, he's with everybody now. And he said, okay, everyone, you know, go home. No one wanted to leave. He said, I'm going home. 
But he waited for everyone to start dispersing, and then he called some of his closer friends. You can close the door, it's getting cold. All right. He called a close circle of his friends. I said, I want to tell you something. What was that close circle? All right. Before, when he was still young, there was a group of Vaishnavas in Navadvip. Many people in Navadvip were Shaktas. They worshipped Mata Durga, and they would focus more on sense enjoyment, and they would worship Mother Nature as Kali or as Durga and the Goddess Mother, and they would offer animal sacrifices, and they were generally quite materialistic. It's not about who you worship, it's about what's your desire. So they were generally materialistic. So he, there was a group of Vaishnavas, Advaita Charya, Srivas Pandit, Suklambar, Sriman Pandit, Gadadhar Pandit was always like a devotee of Krishna, he always had love for Krishna. So Lord Chaitanya, as he developed that love for Krishna, he was thinking, where are my real friends? Why spiritual life was said we should have like-minded association? Those are our friends. Like-minded association. So he said, who are those who have that similar mindset as me? That similar love for Krishna. And they were there. The devotees were there. But who is there? Who is going to lead the mission? Who is going to establish this mood of bhakti in the world? How, who is going to galvanize them and bring them all together? And also they're all looking, where is my beloved? Where is Krishna? So Lord Chaitanya now called them to a private meeting. Only a few, four or five. One of them is Sriman Pandit. He, he's the one who then begins to spread the news. So he, then he says, oh, he begins to speak about the glory of Krishna, but not just the glory of God, the beauty of Krishna, the beauty of God. What is more important? What is the highest quality of God? His beauty. His sweetness. His all attractiveness. In this world, everyone is thinking, those who are just thinking about the glory of God, this is either Aishwarya Bhakti, in the mood of opulence and reverence, and Vaidhi, regulative devotion, God is great. But it's also, I like opulence, so God is the mode of opulence. But God is the most beautiful, the most sweet, the most attractive. That has the power to awaken love of God in your heart. So he began glorifying the beauty of Krishna and the power of Bhakti, and the importance of bhakti. And just as he began, just starting to touch on this topic, he began to weep. He just began. He said, the devotees asked him, so, you know, you went to Gaia, how was it? And he said, you know, I went and I saw thousands of people praising Vishnu and chanting. And then I went to a place, he said, I went to Pada Padma Tirtha. I went to one special holy place. And just saying the name of that place, he began to weep. And that whole courtyard became filled with tears. The devotees were astonished. What has happened to our Goranga Nimai? What has happened to Nimai? But they were overjoyed seeing, because they saw he's speaking of Krishna and weeping tears of love. So now they're feeling, finally, it's like in a desert, and for years, you've been waiting for rain. How many years? 20, almost 18, 20 years. Waiting for Lord Chaitanya to begin exhibiting this pure love of God. I think it was maybe 15, 16. From childhood, he had, you know, he's Bhagavan. But his mission is to distribute this love of Krishna, pure love. And so now in that desert, his tears of ecstasy and tears of joy are completely soaking the ground all around all the devotees. Lord Chaitanya cannot contain himself. And then after, with great difficulty, after many minutes, he says, let us meet tomorrow. I want to speak what's in my heart, but I just can't do it yet today. I want to speak what's in my heart. Tomorrow, let's meet at Suklambar Brahmachari's house. So in Navadvip, there's some Brahmacharis. And what does the house mean? It just means like they have a thatched roof hut. You know, living in India at that time, it wasn't like, you know, it cost a million dollars to buy half an acre of land and put up a thatched hut like it does in America in any good area, right? Well, they just had a little piece of land, 
you know, like maybe the size of this temple room or something. And he had a little straw hut. He said, let's meet at his house. And then he went home. So the next morning, already this news started to spread amongst all the Vaishnavas. The Vaishnavas were like the underground movement, original counterculture of Navadvip. You know, everyone was thinking that, you know, we should do according to our tradition. We should slaughter animals and eat their flesh and enjoy with each other in this world. And we should, you know, worship God also, but really we should enjoy our senses. But there was an underground movement. What is that? Purpose of human life is to develop love of God and to serve God, and to try to please God. And develop that relationship, that is the purpose of life. And according to their culture, they were practicing Krishna Bhakti. So the news spread like wildfire, faster than any you know, viral post. All the devotees in Navadvip heard this news that same evening. Lord Chaitanya has ecstatic, developed ecstatic love of God. And he said, we're going to meet tomorrow. Suklambar Brahmachari's house. But Lord Chaitanya said, don't invite everybody. I want to keep it intimate. So in the morning time, the next morning, Srivas Pandit was a group leader. He's an incarnation of Narad Rishi who is himself embodiment of ecstatic love. So the incarnation of Narad Muni said at his house, Srivas Pandit, he'd incarnated there, Srivas Pandit. And the, the Vaishnavas would assemble there. So the morning time, this is like now at like six in the morning. There's a flower tree at Srivas Pandit's house. And every day the Vaishnavas, the underground movement of Krishna devotees in Navadvip, outnumbered, vastly outnumbered by the Smarthas, impersonalists and the materialists. But there's this group of countercultural devotees. Bhakti is real counterculture. It said, even among millions of liberated souls, pure devotees of Krishna are rare. So bhakti yoga, it's real counterculture. Sometimes it becomes powerful and prominent and that's Lord Chaitanya's desire and mercy for this age, but it's a countercultural thing. It's the truth. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was a social reformer, revolutionary, countercultural figure. It's true. And we see Nartan Das Thakur, revolutionary, countercultural, Ramanujacharya. Generally, our Vaishnava Charis are like that. So, everyone's talking around the flower tree. <laughs> right? You imagine this beautiful big tree that's just exploding with flowers in the morning. And every day it would give so many flowers, however, no matter how many flowers they picked, the next day it would be full of flowers. So, every day they would make garlands for Krishna from this flower tree. And so five or six devotees are picking flowers and talking amongst themselves. Did you hear what happened? Oh, we're going to meet today, this afternoon. When's it going to happen? What's going to happen? And Gadadhar Pandit is there. Who is Gadadhar Pandit? This is probably the first time you're hearing his name. So Gadadhar Pandit is? Yes. So Krishna appears as Lord Chaitanya with the mood of Radharani. But Radharani came along herself as Gadadhar Pandit. She herself came along. Not only Radharani, who else came? Lalita Devi. So Lalita Devi is standing next to Radharani here. She also came as who? Ramananda Roy. Oh, yeah, good. Okay. Vishaka Devi is on Krishna's side. She came as Ramananda Roy. Lalita Devi came as Rupa Damodar. Then Rupa Goswami came as Rupa Manjari. Raghunath Das Goswami came as Rati Manjari. All our Guru Varga came. Six Goswamis, all Shmati Radhika's maid servants. And Nityananda Prabhu came, Balaram, with many cowherd boys, Dwaras Gopal. So many personalities were appearing just before Lord Chaitanya's appearance or during Lord Chaitanya's appearance to begin this transcendental movement. So Gadadhar Pandit now is an important part of his story. Gadadhar Pandit was a little bit shy. Why? Because Gadadhar Pandit is Srimati Radhika, but it's described that she is in the role of like a principal of the school. Lord Chaitanya is developing love of God in the mood of the gopis, in the mood of Shimati Radhika. But if he's always directly experiencing that relationship with Radharani is right there as Gadadhar Pandit, then this will not facilitate properly his relishing of the mood of Radharani and devotion to Krishna. Because he is Krishna, he loves Radharani. One time Lord Chaitanya went to Vrindavan and he was so absorbed in Krishna or so absorbed in Radharani, he started again becoming Sham, like Krishna. So Radharani is helping facilitate his development. So sometimes she's in a more shy role, 
or a hidden role, and also very curious to see. We heard last night, right? Last night, Radharani had a dream. She was with Krishna, Niduvan. Why is it the story from Niduvan that we sing a song? Nidhuvana naghari mohita manasa vikatita gada gada basham saki kalaya gauram udharam. Oh, saki, oh, friend, how is this Gauranga? The moods of this song, the mood of Shrimati Radhika. He is Nidhuvana nagari. No, Shrimati Radhika is Nidhuvana nagari. That means in Nidhuvan, which is a special forest grove in Vrindavan, there's a place called Niduvan, the forest of Nidu. And so Radharani is sleeping with Krishna and she has a dream of Lord Chaitanya. Radharani tells Krishna in the morning, she wakes up and says, Krishna, something very strange happened. I had a strange dream. You ever had this kind of dream? And it was very ecstatic. It was very blissful. In the dream, I was experiencing ecstasy, but it was wondrous. It was, it over whelmed my mind and consciousness. I did not know what to do with this dream, how to understand it. You have a dream that you just can't understand. And she said, I saw this personality. He was effulgent like the sun, golden, radiating this effulgence of love. And he was dancing on the banks of the river, surrounded by tens of thousands of people, all with their arms upraised, chanting, Haribo, 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 calling out. And tears were pouring from his eyes like torrents of rain. And he's calling out, Kaha Krishna, where's Krishna? Kaha jao, kaha pao, brajendranan, where's Krishna? Where's Krishna? He's calling out. And tears are pouring from his eyes and his hairs are standing on end. And then in ecstasy, he's jumping, meters in the air, here and there, and everyone's running around. If someone's seen like Sankirtan, Gorpanima, you know, people will be running back and forth chanting, Haribo, Haribo, Hari Harai, Namakrishna. Radharani said, I can't understand this. And I'm attracted to this person. Who is he? And he is dressed as a sannyasi, completely renouncing everything, exhibiting love of God. Who is this person? Krishna is smiling. He said, Oh, Radharani, this is myself. There's a long story about this but this is the essence. So now Radharani is Gadadhar Pandit, said, I will come along. When Krishna came to earth from the spiritual world, Radharani came. At first she didn't want to come. When Krishna was in the spiritual world, he said, I will go to earth. Why? Mother earth is praying for me to come. This is the beginning of the, beginning of the 10th canto, beginning of the Bhagavatam, but the, sor you know, the source of Krishna's, the, it's like the Mangala Charan for Krishna's pastimes, invocation for Krishna's pastimes. Mother Earth personified praise to Lord Brahma, Krishna's first created being, his son. Please save me from all these demonic kings who are pillaging and ravaging my earth and disturbing everybody. Please protect me. So Krishna came to the earth, but he said, Radharani, please come. I will also show my sweet pastimes and attract people to my eternal abode. I'm not just coming to earth to defeat the demons. I'm not just coming to earth to establish dharma. I'm coming to earth to help attract people to my spiritual abode. That is the purpose. Swami Prabhupada did not say, I've just come to establish dharma. No, he said, back home, back to Godhead. That is the purpose. All right? Not just to live in this world and establish the, everyone wants the kingdom of God in this world, but God should stay in his world. Give me your kingdom, but without you and without your worship and without devotion to you. I just want your kingdom, heaven on earth. That's what we all want. No, that's what many people want. That's not what we are praying for. So Radharani said, I don't want to go. This world is a horrible place. She said, I'm happy in Vrindavan, spiritual Vrindavan. I'm happy here. Jamuna Devi is here. My friend, Lita Vishaka, all the mandaris, all the cows, all the calves, all the deer, all the peacocks, the forests of Vrindavan, Giriraj, Govardhan, everything is here in the transcendental world. Why would I go to that world? It's like Krishna's trying to convince his beloved to go on vacation somewhere and she doesn't want to go. So I don't want to leave Vrindavan. Vrindavan is my heart. So therefore, what happens? Krishna says, okay, what condition? What, what is the condition for you to go to this world? He says, only if my Giriraj Govardhan manifests. So before Krishna appeared, Giriraj Govardhan came to Vrindavan. Transcendental Giriraj, he was born, he's the son of the Himalayas, and he came to Vrindavan. 
lifted and brought by Kashyap Rishi. There's a story of how Govardhan appeared in Vrindavan. Jamuna Devi appeared. She is there, but Vishaka Devi and that special incarnation of the mood of love in Radharani Saki came. All the forests manifested. All the cows, calves from the eternal world, all their associates manifested. So then Radharani said, I'll go. Otherwise, it's Marte Loka. I won't go. So Radharani was hesitant to go. This world is a horrible place, right? It's a beautiful place. But there's also so much violence, so much suffering, so much cruelty. We don't need to get into this topic, but we all know it's true. There's so much cruelty and violence and suffering and pain in this world. She wasn't interested. But finally, Krishna said, okay, your Vrindavan will be there. And she never left Vrindavan. Only one time, by Krishna's request, she went to Kurukshetra. Only time she left Vrindavan in her life. With all her associates, she didn't go alone. All the gopis. That's why Vaishnavas say, if you want to worship Radharani, she has to be with her gopis. We always worship Radharani with the gopis. She's never without her friends. So they all went together only one time and left Vrindavan and she was with all her associates, so it is Vrindavan. And then she told Krishna, come back to Vrindavan. So they went, they traveled there for a day, met with Krishna for a few days and then said, let's come back to Vrindavan. So that's Radharani and Krishna's pastimes. But also when Lord Chaitanya was coming, then Radharani said, I will come. The situation reversed. This time Lord Chaitanya said, when I came as Krishna, no one understood your glories. All right? When I came as Krishna, no one understood you. Why? You're in this very beautiful form, the embodiment of pure love of God and the best way to please and serve and you know, be in that relationship of love as the form of the gopis, Brenda Davies, the, the, the highest supreme goddesses, they appeared in that form and Krishna, Krishna said, oh, everyone could not understand our relationship. And everyone criticized you, criticized the gopis. Chris, even in Vrindavan, you were criticized. Chatila and Kutila, even in Vrindavan, Chandravali. So this incarnation, I will come, I will be a sannyasi. In Krishna Lila, he was trying to convince Rayarani to go. But in Gore, he said, I will go. And she had had that dream. He said, I will go. He said, I will also come. He said, no, you know, look what happened last time. When I was Ram, Sita came and look what happened. Everyone knows the story of Ram and Sita. I was Ram... You know, Nishringadev is good. Shakti, Shakti, Matora, Beda. Shakti, Shakti, Man in one form. <laughs> Nishringadev is good. Half man, half lion. Radha, Krishna together in one form. Shakti, Shakti, Matora. Lakshmi, Narayan, Krishna, Radha, Sita, Ram. All in one form. Better. Other incarnations. Vam and Dev. One form. Shakti, Shakti, Man. But now, Radharani said, I will go. Lord Chaitanya said, I will be a sannyasi. He said, I want to go and be there. I want to witness. So she said, and I will bring all the gopis. All the gopis are going to come. Not only the gopis, all the coward boys are going to come. Lord Nityananda Balaram appeared and all his associates, all the coward boys, and they preached like transcendental madmen everywhere. And, you know, Lord Nityananda with the coward boys, they would go village to village. Sometimes they would go for a month in one direction and then go a month back in the other direction. And everywhere they would go, they'd just be doing kirtan. Sometimes for days they wouldn't eat because they were doing kirtan all day, dancing, singing, and ecstatic. Love. And then they would have a feast like you can't imagine. I imagine you go three, four days just chanting in ecstasy, pure love of God. And then, you know, like some great householder says, we're going to make a feast. And they prepare this amazing feast and all, everybody's sitting together and taking prasad. So that's Lord Nityananda. But Radharani said, I'll bring all my gopis. They all came. But they appeared in male form, masculine form. Lord Chaitanya said, if you appear as the gopis, who knows what will happen. <laughs> the world cannot handle <laughs> your presence in that form directly. So Gadadhar Pandit, Radharani came in that male form, Gadadhar Pandit. And in the mood of service, but also facilitating, she taught Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, I've come to enter the school of the gopis. This is the truth. I've come to enter the school of the British gopis. Why? When he came back. One day he was with his students. He was talking about Krishna. He was saying, Krishna this, Krishna that, Krishna, 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 Krishna. But then one day he just started calling out, Gopi, Gopi, Gopi. And all his students got angry. He said, okay, you were talking about Krishna, that's fine. Even though we didn't like it, we want to hear about grammar and studies and this and that, materialism, economics, civics, civics, physics, economics. 
but not bhakti. And Lord Chaitanya described everything in terms of bhakti, but then one day he just starts saying gopi, gopi, and they say, that's it, that's the last straw. Really, it's better if you're in a materialist or an impersonalist. Then you start talking about love of God, this person Krishna. And yes, we know he's God, but like, he's God and we're people and we're trying to enjoy this world and follow dharma and you know, go to heaven and be happy, separate from Krishna. But he's teaching about love of Krishna and now he's gone above that and he's talking about the gopis, the coward girls. They began to abuse him. His students began to criticize him. What kind of mentality is this? What kind of teaching is this? Gopi, gopi, gopi. This is bogus. You should not do it like this. Lord Chaitanya picked up a stick. And he started chasing them. <laughs> they all ran in fear and then went and criticized them all throughout the town. Lord Chaitanya has gone mad. Not only has he gone mad, but you know, there's like a madman and then there's like a madman who starts a cult, <laughs> right? So the Lord Chaitanya, Swami Prabhupada writes in his purports, the cult of Krishna consciousness. So not only has Lord Chaitanya gone mad, they called him Nimai. He was born under a neem tree. And Nimai, he was given the name to protect him because Mother Sachi had lost, had many miscarriages. So when he was born, she said, oh, well, you're going to name him Nimai. No ghosts want to come around this bitter neem. So his name is Nimai. So everyone said, Nimai has gone mad. Not only has he gone mad, he's starting a new cult. Love for Krishna in the mood of the gopis. That's Lord Chaitanya's cult. Oof. Very disturbed. So, let's see if we can get through this story. So this is the second day after he returned. He returned, everyone met with him. Everyone, and then he met with a little group and he said, tomorrow morning... We are going to meet at Suklambar Brahmachari's hut <laughs> in his courtyard. And now in the morning time, everyone's picking flowers and talking about it. Who? Specifically this group of those in the mood of Shimati Radhika's followers. And Shimati Radhika herself is there, Gadadhar Pandit. But she was a little shy. So that afternoon when they met, Shrivas Pandit went, Sriman Pandit was the one who was there and spreading the news. Suklambara Brahmachari is there, Mukunda, Vasugosh, Muradi, some of Mahaprabhu's group, Advaita Charya, who Mahaprabhu called Sadashiva, he was there. And <clears throat> these were like leaders, community leaders also. So there's this underground bhakti movement going on that began sometime before Mahaprabhu appeared. They, you know, you, they set it in motion. So there's this underground Krishna Bhakti, Braja Bhakti movement going, and all the Kirtan leaders, Muradi, Mukunda, they're all gathered together to hear the news from Lord Chaitanya. But Gadadhar Pandit hid. Gadadhar Pandit, Radharani, hid in the house. And Mahaprabhu's in the courtyard discussing. So what happens? Everyone's waiting for Mahaprabhu, they're doing Kirtan, chanting Gopal, Govinda Ram, many Kirtans. Shri Krishna, Govinda, Hare Murari, He Nata, Narayan, Nata Vishnu. They're doing kirtan. Lord Chaitanya arrives. And they all look, oh, Lord Chaitanya exhibiting love of God. And he sits down in their midst and he begins to speak about Krishna. How much? Just begins. <laughs> right? Second day is trying to speak about Krishna. You know, and he talks about bhakti yoga. Bhakti Vam Darshayati. Bhakti is the power to see Krishna. Bhakti gives you the power to see Krishna with love. Bhakti controls Krishna. Bhakti Vam Bhushati. Bhakti is the supreme ornament, the supreme glory of life. So he began speaking about Bhakti and then he quotes from all the scriptures. Sarvapati Vinirmukta. He speaks a few verses about Bhakti. And he's standing up now. And there's the house. He's standing in the courtyard of the house. So you imagine, okay, there's like a hut. And then the, there's some overhang, why when it rains, so you're sheltered from the rain. And all the devotees are gathered under that awning, that courtyard, and Lord Chaitanya is standing. And as Lord Chaitanya is describing bhakti, it's tall, fulgent. He starts describing bhakti and then he just says, Krishna, and he falls over onto the pillar. This is described here in Chaitanya Bhagavat. This is chapter one, uh, part one, Madhikanda, middle part. So he's describing, he says, Krishna, and he falls into the pillar. 
and the force of his fall, that the force of that divine love in his body, it's like an electric current. Sometimes I'll give you a funny example, not a funny, a beautiful example. Our Gurudev, in his elder years, you see our Gurudev here, Srila Bhakti Narayana Swami Maharaj, when he was like 85 and so forth, he was traveling all over the world, week to week, place to place, no tired, you never get tired. His associates would always get, like not all, but many of them, they would get jet lag, they would get tired, this is how it's described. Our Brajanath Prabhu, Vrinda Didi, others, Shubhad Madhamars, you know, Gurudev's associate for many years, <laughs> no problem. But sometimes they would say, you know, they would get a little tired. Why well, Gurudev's always changing time zones? But Gurudev's schedule was always fixed, Nitya Radha Krishna's pastimes. Mangalarti, fixed time. Gurudev never tired. So one time, Gurudev was walking and, you know, there's a different examples. One time in India, there's a few different examples. The power of Sri Guru. I'll give you two examples that I can think of off the top of my head. You think Gurudev is some old man, right? How much power is in his body? One time he was at Radha Kund, Radharani's lake in Vrindavan. And he was offering water with prayers. So when you go to a holy lake or you go to a holy river, you take the water and you offer it. It's called Tilanjali. And you remember all your ancestors or all your lineage and you pray for everyone and you pray to God and you offer water in a symbol of your devotion. So someone went down and took water from Radha Kund, which is described to be the lake embodiment of Srimati Radhika's love. She manifests that lake and said, anyone who bathes there can develop pure love of God. So they took that lake water and he's the mood of the servant. He's the devotee. And they use that water to wash his feet while he's himself doing his offering and prayers. So angry, he turned around, he like, push this person. And they flew back, you know, like an electric shock. Like, like you know, what do they call it? Is it Tai Chi or something? I don't know. What's this like pranic force? What's it called? It's Tai Chi? I don't know. Anyway, it's like, yeah, that Chi, that power in them. Good day this 85 year old. There's another story. There's a brahmachari named Gorsandar Brahmachari. He was cooking in the kitchen with the Vaishnavas for the festival. Thousands of people, you know, so like you're cutting vegetables. And this is like Radharani's group. So people in her mood, in her followers, like to be in the kitchen. We have our devotees in the kitchen right now. They said, we can't come to class. We'll watch class from the kitchen. Why? We want to cut veggies. We want to cook for Krishna. We want to make sweet rice. We want to make pakoras. We want to make, there's many things I won't reveal they're making today, right? We want to keep cooking. So this brahmachari was in Radharani's kitchen party, cooking, cutting vegetables. I would be there for many, many years for these big festivals. We'd make a mountain of pumpkin, a mountain of cabbage, a mountain of potatoes, rice, dal, sweets, halava, fill up rooms. You know, in Navadri, we would be cooking and there would be like from here to the ceiling rice. And they have to make special, I was there, right, in Navadri, but right now it's going on. You have to pour special reinforced concrete. This is how they do it. They have special concrete, highest grade, and it's reinforced, thick. And they make a pad for this where all the rice is going to sit. And they make a room full of rice to feed 15,000 pilgrims, 20,000 pilgrims. And they make 100 or 150 like containers like this size, you know, like three, two and a half feet by two and a half feet. And two people carry them and they serve out. And there's about 150 of that. And so there's about 300 people serving prasad at once. So this brahmachari was sitting and chopping veggies, but he was an excellent kirtaniya. He was one of Gurudev's best kirtaniyas. Tall, you know, from Hawaii, Gorsundar Puru, right? Tall, strong, beautiful. His name was Gorsundar, you know? So very beautiful, golden, like, you know, devotee of Lord Chaitanya. Played Murdanga, you know, I remember as a young boy, he would go, we'd go to Gurudev festivals. We did uh, North Carolina, we did Alachua, we did Houston, you know, New Braj in India. Italy, we'd, Gurudev would travel around the world and the kirtans, everyone would just, it was like Lord Nityananda had appeared with his devotees and you're jumping back and forth. Our Prem Priyojan Prabhu, Krishnadas Prabhu, Gorsundar Prabhu, Gurudev's group of kirtaniyas, all, so, so many of Gurudev's daughters, they sang so sweetly, everyone would weep and then Sankirtan, everyone would be so ecstatic. So this Gorsundar Prabhu, he was wanting to cut veggies in the kitchen. Gurudev said, no, you're our kirtaniya, come on Parikrama. And he had told him, but he said, no, anyhow, I'm going to cook in the kitchen. I don't know exactly the story, but this is how I've heard it. So Gurudev came, you know, he's ready to go out on Parikrama in the morning and pilgrimage with thousands of people. And he looked, you know, through the hallway, you can see, this is Gopinath the Vine. You can see where everyone's sitting around the fire, place, cooking, cutting vegetables. So he saw him cutting. 
And from about 30 feet back, he just ran <laughs> and kicked him. And of course, our flu. <laughs> Gurudev is now like 80 something years old. And whoosh, what is this power? All right. So Lord Chaitanya is just standing there. He just falls over. You wouldn't think much happens, right? What this Chaitanya Bhagavat describes, he fell into the pillar and immediately the pillar cracked and the roof <laughs> fell down. It's a straw thatched hut, you know? So it's cracked and then Lord Chaitanya fell on the ground and then all the devotees fell on the ground. So all like dozens of devotees gathered around, they all fell senseless. Gadadhar Pandit Radharani is hiding in the house. Sitting aside, listening, you know, what is he talking about? We're talking about bhakti, you're talking about love for Krishna. That's my property. Bhakti is my wealth. When he's talking about it, you know, Krishna is always like, feels like he's the proprietor. It's my property. I'm talking about, I've developed love of God. And it's, no, it's, it's her property. She's borrowed it to you. She has given you that gift, but that's her mood. And so she's listening. How is he going to describe it? And Lord Chaitanya falls and all the devotees fall and she falls senseless. Gadadhar Pandit falls senseless. Mahaprabhu always had friendship with Gadadhar Pandit as a boy. They were close friends. But Mahaprabhu was a little arrogant when he was young. Actually, he was very arrogant. He would always challenge the devotees. He would, they would walk to school, you know, and from different houses, and they would meet in the pathway, and he would start to debate with them and argue. And Gadadhar Pandit was never interested in debate. You know, and so it was, it was like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was a little bit like a, you know, like a little bit like a, you know, like a jock punk, you know, like a little... Not like that, but like a little bit like intimidating to people. That's what I was described. He was very proud. It was his pastime. <laughs> like Krishna was also very naughty. He was mischievous and he was a little like he was a little proud. So Gadadhar Pandit and devotees, they loved him. They would have friendship, but also they were a little like, you see him coming and you think, oh, now he's going to argue and debate with us or he's going to try to challenge us. But now Gadadhar Pandit is silent. And he, hearing about love of Krishna, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was saying, Krishna, Krishna, and fell on the pillar and the roof was falling in. You know, it's like the pillar cracks in half and the roof comes down like three, four feet, right? And all the devotees fall over like, you know, pinballs. Pinballs? Pins. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> Everyone just falls over, you know, like a bowling, <laughs> right? Just <laughs> full perfect, what's it called? Perfect strike? I don't know. I don't, I don't know bowling terminology. Everyone falls <laughs> over. <laughs> and Gadadhar Pandit inside has fallen. Lord Chaitanya, after a few minutes, gets up and he's weeping. And you know what he says? Where is Gadadhar Pandit? <laughs> they say, how do you know? He's hiding inside. He said, oh, call Gadadhar Pandit. Right? He's trying to express what is this love of Krishna. That's why Radharani and Krishna had a dialogue. What is the nature of love of God? What is the nature of pure love? And she says, without realizing it, you can't express it. It's just words. It's just sophistry. It's just intellectualism. You're standing on the shore of love, trying to describe the nature of that person who is drowning in love. What does a person who is on the shore of love know what it's like when you're drowning in that love, right? It's just sophistry, just intellectualism. That's why many people, you go to universities, colleges, they talk about Lord Chaitanya, they talk about this pure devotion. Without being a devotee, how can you understand the mood of love? So Mahaprabhu calls out, Gadadhar Pandit, oh Gadadhar, please come. Gadadhar Pandit is very shy, Radharani's mood, very shy. And she comes out, he comes out in that form, and the whole day passes weeping. <laughs> that's, that's how it's next described. The whole day passes just weeping, tears of love. All the devotees, the ground becomes drenched. You know, like I said, you could take a shovel and dig into the ground and like six, seven inches down, it's just wet. With the tears of Lord Chaitanya, Radhar Pandit, and all the devotees. This is how Lord Chaitanya's pastimes begin, spreading this pure love of Krishna. All right, so we've come up to this point. We have many more stories to tell. Uh, we'll have prasadam in a little bit. And you all can tell me when you like me to next to perform the service of continuing the story. <laughs>